Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am going to be carrying out a much requested valve clearance on my VFR 800. Uh, this is obviously the sixth gen VTEC model, and as such, there's quite a lot involved in checking the valve clearances on this bike. Now, uh, valve clearances on this model are supposed to be checked every 16,000 miles. This bike is pushing 30,000 miles and I've actually got no evidence that it was ever uh, done in the past. So I am going to be doing it right now. It's coming up due soon anyway. So um, there's uh, you know no harm, no foul. So we'll, uh, what I need to do is um, take both the side fairings off lift the tank off and take the seat off so what i'll do i'll whip all of that off you don't need to see me do that because most people have probably done that countless times and you've seen me do it countless times um so yeah i'll um, get all of that done and then we'll uh, we'll bring you back in and we'll have a little bit of a discussion about um the uh, the vfr vtech models valve clearances and um try and put to bed a few myths we'll call them myths Right guys, see you soon. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we've got the panels off, we've got the tank off. Now, I removed the tank completely um, from the bike. Uh, that involved removing the breather hose and the overflow for the, for the tank, disconnecting the electrical connectors, and also uh, removing both the return and feed fuel lines uh, from the fuel pump, which is obviously at the bottom of the tank. Now, the, the high pressure line is a hex head banjo bolt which needs to be undone and there is a aluminium washer either side of that which will need to be discarded and thrown away and um, replaced with brand new ones when I refit the tank um, but obviously I had a bit of fuel in my in my tank which needed to be drained first so what I did was I just had got a, uh, a piece of um, fuel line which I had lying around in the garage um, pulled the return line off fitted my um, hose to it and then just drained all the fuel out into a can once it had drained then i could then do uh, the high pressure um feed line uh and then take the tank off and and then uh, we're uh, left with what you can see here okay uh, before we go any further what i want to do i just want to uh, briefly discuss um the reason why we're going to do this job now i see it almost every day somebody will come on to the face group uh, the facebook groups and ask the question I've just been quoted eight, 900 pounds um, by a dealer to have my valve clearances checked. Does this seem right or is somebody have my pants down? Now, yes, that is what it costs. And no, they're not having your pants down. If you're gonna to go to a dealership, you will pay um, for this job. It is a big job, um, very labor intensive, and you'll see the reasoning why um, that is as we go through the task. To that end, um, because of the costs involved, what I do find a lot is people say, oh, I've not bothered having it done, my bike's fine, blah, 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 blah. Now, what I will say is that this is a valve clearance check. You're not guaranteed to need to do an adjustment. Um, it's literally checking to see if they are within, within spec. If they aren't within spec, then there is um, additional work required and additional expense. Um, particularly with the VTEC, uh, the VTEC buckets, because the VTEC ones have to be replaced entirely. It's not just a case of shimming them. So do I think it's um, necessary? Yes, yes I do. Um, let's be honest, what I, what I like to do is I like to apply the substitution test. Were it any other bike with standard valve clearances that didn't cost eight, eight, nine hundred quid and probably cost 100, 150 quid. Nobody would be asking the question whether it was necessary. People are asking the question whether it's necessary to see if it's worth their money. Now, yes, it is. Ultimately, you should be checking your valve clearances. If they're too, um, if the, uh, if they're, if they're too loose, um, then 
you'll you'll get an extra lash and that could cause damage obviously there there are rotating components in there and you, you know you're going to you're going to cause some um, potential uh, potential damage um, to to those components by having the valve clearances too too loose if they're too tight however then the the, the valves aren't going to be fully closing um, don't forget that these gaps are there to allow expansion of all the components within the cylinder head as they get hot if the if the gaps are too tight when they're cold they're going to be even tighter when the engine is up to temp if that's the case then the, potentially the valves aren't going to be closing fully the engine can run even hotter than it should be and obviously cause damage not to mention obviously that there is um potential for fuel economy issues and the obvious performance um performance issues that will be uh, experienced by having your your valve train running out of spec anyway i think i've waffled on enough about that um as i always say it's your bike you can do what you want to do um if you don't want to pay 900 pounds to a dealership to do this then watch this video and maybe have a go yourself you'll um be surprised uh, actually at how simple it is um with uh, with with something to follow anyway as i said i've waffled on let's uh, let's crack on what we need to do next is we need to access the uh, the, the cam covers um, the rear one here, you can see, is it, pretty um, pretty accessible. However, we need to get rid of all of this gubbins, everything related to the pair system, um, all the pipe work. We need to get the um, the uh, the coil sticks out of the way. Um, for the front one, however, that one's a little bit more involved. We're going to take the air box off. Um, I'm not 100% certain uh, whether we're going to need to remove the radiators yet. It's very possible because otherwise we'll, um, we may struggle to see the timing marks. Um, if we can get away without removing the radiators, then we will. If we can't, it's not a biggie. We just need to drain the coolant. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So let's um, let's uh, crack on and stop the waffle. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the air box because uh, that's the biggest component in this area, and it's um, going to be in the way. So, first things first. Let's take the, the vacuum line off of the flapper recover my insulation tape which was blocking it and then we'll take the screws out of the airbox lid and there we go okay I'll recover the two screws before I lose them And then I'm going to pop that to one side, along with the air filter. Right, now what we can see is the inlet trumpets. And to remove the lower part of the, uh, the air box, there's screws down each of these holes in the trumpets. Once those screws are out, the trumpets will come out. And then there's nothing else holding the, uh, the, 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 the bed of the air box in place. Um, with the exception of the hoses and a few sensors. So we'll get these trumpets off. And then uh, we can lift the uh, the bed of the airbox off. Okay, then to uh, to remove the bed of the um, airbox, obviously we need to remove all the um, the pair system. And there's a few sensors. We've got a manifold air pressure sensor at the back, intake air temperature sensor, and intake air control um, solenoid connector just down here, which is a grey one. Uh, we'll get to that one in a second. First thing I'm going to do is take the hoses off for the pair system this uh this is the pair solenoid and it does actually just slot onto that little tang there it just came off as i pulled the hoses off down here let's just disconnect that one the manifold air pressure underneath intake air temperature just pops off and the air control on the side there then we're pretty much out with the exception of one more vacuum line which i just need to give a little twist to because it's a bit old and been on there a little while and there we go look 
that on. And that's that. That is the, the vacuum lines and all the sensors and connectors disconnected. On the uh, manifold air pressure sensor, there is another vacuum line which is actually split, so I will replace that one. And that one goes down to this little T-piece just down here. So there we go, that's the, uh, the air box removed. Okay, with the, uh, with the air box removed, obviously there's a lot more open space in here. We still need to remove a few things. I wanna remove all of this pair stuff and obviously the uh, the coil sticks but yeah at the top of the um the throttle bodies we can see the starter valves and all that good stuff and here's the adjusters for the starter valves the uh the starter valves i'm actually going to um well, i'm actually going to synchronize the starter valves when i come to reassemble the uh re reassemble the bike uh, because while they're off it's a good uh, it'll be a good idea and again i don't know when it was last done um and it obviously does promote good running so uh well worth uh, well worth doing um, to get that absolutely spot on perfect idle. Okay, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to remove the pair system. The uh, uh, the heated grips have actually been tie wrapped onto the side of the pipe for the pair. Um, so I'm gonna cut those off. Um, but uh, yeah, it's simply a case of disconnecting the clip here and pulling it off the reed valve body. And the same at the front. And popping that one off too. There we go. And then that can all be removed from the bike, as you can see, just like so. All I need to do is disconnect the connector for the pair solenoid, which is underneath this ball of tape, and then um, snip the cable tires for the uh, that, uh, for the cable to the heat grip that goes to the battery. Okay, that's all out of the way. What we need to do next is remove the stick coils. Disconnect the electrical connectors for each one. Pop them to one side. And then under one. bolts pop them in my pocket and then remove the two coils pop them to one side right next cam cover okay holding on the cam cover there's four bolts one two three there four there the two at the back are quite difficult to get into with a with a socket you may be able to get in there with a uj um, if not we've got a spanner um, front ones dead straightforward crack them off. Bear in mind underneath these bolts there is a little gasket. Worth bearing in mind that on reassembly all the gaskets should be replaced with new ones. Don't cheap out because if you do you'll have to delve back in here again and replace them again when you've got an oil leak so you're better off doing it properly to start with, and it won't go wrong. These bolts are a weird bolt. As you can see, they've got a funny shape to them. So let me uh, get my spanner on the other two. Once I've got them out, we'll pull the cam cover off. Okay, there's the four bolts out. These two at the back are a bit of a pain. You could just about get into this one with a UJ, but what I would recommend is you use a six-sided socket. Don't hit it with a 12, because if you do, it'll just round off and then um, you, you know you're going to cause yourself problems but if you can get a, 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 a six-sided socket sorry a six-sided socket on it put my teeth in get a six-sided socket on it you'll uh, you'll be fine okay what we need to do now is take the uh, take the gasket off uh, sorry the the cam cover even um, now it's been on there a while so it may it may pull off it may come off that easy it may come off quite oh there we go yeah it's coming off quite easy and there we go now 
gasket wise you've got the uh, the gasket around the outside of the cover and then there's two gaskets here which go around the profiles for the um, for the for the spark plugs see so you need to make sure you get all of these um, and the four gaskets for the bolts the the o-rings for the bolts um, will also need to be replaced as well so you need one two three gaskets and then the four um, for the bolts but that don't forget is for both cylinder heads so you need front and rear um, part of the cost of this job is the fact that from Honda this gasket alone costs best part of 40 quid um, I think in fact I think it's actually more I think I found it for about 40 quid via a different source I think it's actually closer to 60 from Honda so that's worth bearing in mind as well obviously the uh, um, the, the cost of the job nearly best part of 100 quid maybe maybe a little bit more is actually taken up just inflaming gaskets for this so that that's um that's part of the uh, the cost involved and that's before you've even started on the labor so what i need to do just pop this to one side and then we can get down a dirty with uh with the camshafts okay additionally on the camshaft cap we've got these um these two dowels here and as you can see there's a little rubber gasket around them um, they'll need replacing as well and um, what I'll do I'll have a look around I'll try and find the best price that I can find all of this equipment um, and then what I'll do I will uh, put links in the description um, so that you can go and buy it by all means have a look around yourself but um, I, uh, I'm a bit thrifty when it comes to these and I like to try and get it from the uh, from the cheapest possible source especially if I can get OEM um, uh, you know you know spares for uh, for the cheapest possible price even if I have to import them from abroad right anyway what we need to do now is we need to um have a look at the timing so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take the cap off the end of the crank and um we can uh, set the cylinders to top dead center we need to um we're going to work on cylinder three which is this one uh, that one's cylinder one um so yeah we'll uh, take the cap off first and then we'll have a look okay this cap here, we need to remove this in order to be able to see the timing marks at the end of the crank. Let me just move that breather out of the way. Uh, 17 mil, again, I would recommend using a six-sided socket, otherwise you risk rounding this sucker off. And there will be an O-ring behind this and you possibly could lose a little bit of oil off a little dribble. Um, there we go. There's the O-ring. Pop that on there again, we'll put a new one on that. And on the end of the crank here, as you can see, we've got timing marks for each of the uh, for each of the cylinders. And then what we'll do, we'll be rotating the crank using this bolt um, to turn it. I mean, you can you can actually put it in gear and turn the wheel if you wish, um, if it makes it easier for you, whichever one you want to do. Um, so yeah, what we need to do next is obviously look at the timing and get everything uh, lined up, ready to um, check our first valve clearance. Okay, before we actually uh, do any actual measurement of the valve clearances, what we need to do is we actually need to remove the uh, camshafts. Now, the reason for that is because the VTEC valves require a little bit of um, a little bit of fettling before we can actually uh, measure the clearances. We've got to we've got to fit a, a small stopper tool into the into the inside of the bucket, and we've also got to remove one of the VTEC springs. Uh, sorry, one of the valve springs on, on the VTEC um, valves. So what we need to do is we need to um, rotate the crank until we align the 3T mark. When the 3T mark is aligned, the uh, cylinder 3 will be at TDC on the compression stroke. To, all, we, all you need to do, as you can see, is literally just rotate the crank. Um, you will feel you will feel the compression as you turn it which is obviously normal um if you're not then there's something wrong with your bike now i did have it on the 3t mark before um at tdc um on the compression stroke four cylinder three i've just done one rotation of the crank but it shouldn't be at tdc on the compression stroke now, now if we look up here the you can see that the valve lobes are pointing down and it's actually just about to it's actually just started to open the valves so that is on the exhaust stroke. So what we need to do is make one more turn. Remembering obviously that one turn on the crankshaft is only half a turn at the camshaft. 
So we're coming up to three, with the three T mark now. Oh, I'm gonna set into three. And there we go. That is it, as you can see. 3T, that is what we're marking it up with, this little notch here and the little line, just what it says, 3T and then there's a line. Line that line up with that little notch. Okay, if we come back up to the camshaft, look at the lobes now on cylinder three, you can see the lobes are pointing upwards and slightly towards each other. That means that the valves are closed because the lobes obviously aren't pressing down on the lifters. And if we look on the actual end of the camshaft itself, here is the reference line. Um, this is the pickup on this camshaft. It has a pickup for the camshaft sensor, which is actually just down in here. And these little these little legs here stroke against the camshaft's position sensor. So this this particular camshaft is uh, the only one that has that. The um, other three um, don't. So the, there is a reference mark on this, but it's also repeated on the sprocket itself, and it will be on that sprocket, but um, even with a torch, you probably won't be able to pick it up on the camera. You just have to take my word for it. Um, and they should both be pointing outwards. So that one is pointing that way, and the one on the other camshaft pointing this way. Okay, so now we can, we can remove the camshafts. In order to do that, we need to take the tension off the chain. As you can see, the, the chain is nicely tensioned. Um, using the uh, using the um, cam chain tensioner that I uh, that I fitted not long ago. Um, hopefully you've all seen that video. If not, go and check it out. Um, now we need to take the tension off the chain. So what we need to do is take the rear foot peg off, take the heat shield off, so we can get access to that cam chain tensioner. Then using a little stopper tool, which uh, again you will have seen in that video, we need to wind it out so that it takes all the tension off the chain. Then we can remove the uh, the camshaft caps and lift the camshafts out. So let me uh, let me, give me a chance to get all of this off. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bore you with that because you've seen it all before. I'll get all of this off and then we'll um, uh, I'll take the tension off the uh, off the cam chains again. You've seen me do that before, and then we'll look at um, stripping the bits out that we need to remove. Okay, so here we have the stopper tool inserted into the camshaft tensioner and the tension I've wound it off and and obviously pushed it in to, to retain that tension. The stopper tool, as I discussed before, is just one of these. It's just, uh, this comes with a brand spanking new tensioner. If you buy a brand new tensioner from Honda or wherever you source it from, you will uh, you will get one of these with it. Um, to fit it, you literally take the bolt out at the end. There'll be a um, washer, a ceiling washer on there as well. Um, and then oil will come out, as you can see. I've got a bit of blue roll here just to catch the drips. Um, then fit the top at all and that removes the tension from the chain. Now it won't look like the tension's off the chain because there is tension bet between the two camshafts. Uh, but if I was to get something and, and rattle the chain um, further down inside the, uh, inside the cylinder head, you would see it move. But um, take my word for it, the, ch the, the chain tension is removed. Okay, what we need to do now is remove the guide from the top of the chain. Then we can look at removing the camshaft caps. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the guide across the top of the cam chain. Two 10mm bolts. They are pretty tight. One thing to note is ensure that you don't drop anything down here. If you look down, um, I'm not sure if it's going to look show up in the cat on the uh, camera enough, but there's a chasm down there and that goes right down at the bottom of the crankcase. You need to avoid dropping anything down there because getting it out is not going to be it's not going to be a piece of cake so when we're removing bolts like this make sure you've got all of them and any washers or anything that may be uh, associated with it there's one bolt pop it in the pocket the other one okay there's the guide just a piece of plastic there's no wear on it which is uh, which is nice let me get the other bolt out of my pocket 
pop that in and then I'll stick that on the bench out of the way. And here's, as we can see, the chain. Okay, what we're going to do next is we're going to remove this bearing cap, this bearing cap, and then this cam cover here. All of these bolts, these eight bolts here, there's two on each of these caps. Um, what we need to do though, however, is we need to loosen them in a crisscross pattern a little bit at a time. If we take one out and all, bearing in mind that they're, the, the valve springs um, will be pushing against the lifters, which in turn will be pushing against the camshaft. And if you take one side out, there is potential for this to be damaged because there's a lot of pressure behind those springs. So take them out a little bit at a time in a crisscross pattern um, until they're all out. And then um, you, you shouldn't have any drivers. So that's what we're going to do next. Right, I'm going to remove the two forward, the two forward bearing caps first. Again, we need to be careful that we don't drop any of the bolts. This one's going to be a little bit awkward to get into, I think. No, I think we got away with that. Yep, we're in. And remove them. Again, making sure we catch the bolts so we don't drop any. If you've got a little magnet, grabber handy it, it may it may come into its own for this job there's one they're quite long there's two Bucket, it's a little bit. Uh, there we go. And there's the first bearing cap. Make sure that these are, if they, I mean, they, they feel like they're in there well, and they should be, to be fair. But but be, bear in mind that they are there, and like, if they are loose, there's potential for them to fall out. So bear that in mind as well. You can mix these up. RE means rear exhaust. Obviously this is the exhaust camshaft, that is the inlet camshaft, and this is the rear bank of cylinders. Obviously the front one will have FE and FI, because as you can see here, this one has RI written on it. So you can't get them wrong, um, but it's worth, uh, worth pointing out nonetheless. So let me just take these bolts out of this cam cover, uh, sorry, this cam cap. and take this cap, off, this cap off, come on. They, they are obviously a snug fit and they've been on there quite well. Those dowels like to hold onto them. And give it a light tap with a little rubber mallet if you wish, um, but don't, uh, don't go crazy with it for obvious reasons. And there we are, that's those two caps removed. What we need to do next is the main camshaft bearing cover. As I said, the eight bolts, we'll take them off in a crisscross pattern to avoid damaging it. Right, as I said, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna crack them all opposites, working from out to in. Blooming great earth cable in the way. little at a time there we come a 
eventually they will all come loose. Loose. Basically, once all the spring pressure from the valve lifters is relieved, then they'll all be loose. And obviously as it comes off as well, ones that were loose then feel a little bit snug again. So it's a case of just going around, finding which ones are loose. Right, now they are all loose, which means that the spring pressure has been relieved and we can actually now remove them. So I'll start in the middle. Bear in mind, each of these bolts has a little washer on it. Don't lose that. There we are, one bolt with a washer. Pop that in my pocket. Right, what I'll do, I'll take all of these bolts out, I'll bring you in when we're ready to remove the cap. Right, that's all eight bolts removed. One thing I will point out, it was only the four inner ones that actually had the washer on. The four outer ones didn't, they're the outer ones and there's no washers on them. Four inner ones only. So that's worth remembering when, when we come to reassemble. Okay, what I'm gonna do, pop these bolts down to uh, down to one side on the bench and then we can take the, carry, uh, the, the cam cap off. Okay, in the time it took me to go over and put the, pop the uh, pop the bolts on the bench, I just heard a little a little little noise, and the the caps actually popped up off of its dowels, and here we are. Now, underneath this cap, there's some little sleeves, weird weird little sleeves. You've got the dowels there, the locating dowels, and these sleeves here have an O-ring. So make sure you catch them. You don't want them. Uh, you don't want them falling out. And obviously that O-ring um, prevents oil spilling out into the uh, into the wells for the spark plugs. So that's what that's there for. So we'll re be replacing those um, obviously on assembly. Again, there's another O-ring there, and there is another one there which is still on the dowel just there. So we'll um, I'll recover that one in a moment, and then uh, yeah, we can. Uh, Look at getting the actual camshafts out themselves. Again, when it comes to reassembly on this, you can't get it the wrong way around. It says in on it, which is obviously the inlet side being this side. So let me pop this on the bench, then we're looking at the camshafts. Okay, so camshafts, inlet, exhaust. What we need to do is just pop the chain over the top of the sprocket. There's no need at all, as you can see, no need at all to remove the sprockets from the end of the camshaft because um, you've got plenty plenty of room to maneuver one thing i am going to do take a little take my little hook here and just hook the cam uh, the cam chain so it doesn't fall down into the uh into the belly of the bike and be a pain to recover okay now camshafts what i'm gonna do don't need to do anything with these to be fair just going to pop them on the uh, pop them on the bench so that they're safe and they don't get uh, don't get damaged um, I'll, I'll give them a little inspection for wear they actually look pretty good from uh, from an uh, initial inspection um, here's the the marks 
that's the uh, that is the one that we're actually lining up when we uh, go get the three the the three T mark on the crank. That's the one we're lining up with the edge of the uh, the edge of the cylinder head. Yeah, so uh, that one there obviously is the. Um, you couldn't see it on the. Uh, you couldn't see it when it was fitted to the bike, but that's the one that we're looking at uh, aligning with the cylinder head where we reassemble. Obviously, the crank won't move, so it'd just be a case of um, I've actually swapped these around. They're actually that way, um, and it should be like like kind of like kind of like that. That's roughly how they're supposed to be. In fact, if I swap them over in my hands to make my life easier. That's kind of roughly the orientation they're supposed to be, and you can see on cylinder three, which is that one there, that the uh, the cam lobes are up and slightly towards each other, meaning that the the all four of the valves on that cylinder are closed, uh, meaning that the um, that cylinder is on the compression stroke. Right, enough waffle. Let's uh, pop these on the bench and then uh, have a look at the lifters. Right, there we are. Cam shafts out, and we can see. All of the lifters in their uh, in their glory. There's quite a bit of oil in around there, so be mindful of that. It shouldn't uh, shouldn't spill out unless you uh, tip the bike over. But we should be good. Um, now you'll notice that four of these valves are actually uh, the four of the uh, lifters, should I say, uh, are actually sitting higher than the other four. These ones here, and the reason for that is because they're the VTEC. Uh, valves and the spring arrangement underneath is different hence the reason why they're sitting higher so what we need to do uh, is pull them all out now you probably get your fingers in there if not use a little magnet and just pop them out now don't uh, don't mix them up make sure that they go back into their the same locations that they came out of don't uh, go swapping around components because they've obviously worn together so we want to um, keep them in the same place that they uh, they were so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on each one at a time now, this is the uh, the first of the VTEC um, the VTEC lifters, and as if you look inside, you can see it looks a little bit different to a normal lifter. What I'll do, I'll pop that one back down there just so we can use another one for comparison. This is a non VTEC valve, and as you can see, it uh, it looks completely different. And as you can see, I've just moved the little just moved the little shim from underneath and I'm gonna what I'm gonna do I'm actually gonna pop that back in into its place in fact easiest thing to do in all fairness is actually to fit it back onto the top of the valve like so there we go yeah so as you can see they are completely different to the uh, the VTEC ones, and to adjust the clearances on these, all we do is we re we replace that shim with a thicker or thinner one, depending upon um, the clearance that's achieved. Right, um, let me pop that back in so we don't lose anything. And again, I will take out the VTEC one, and then what we're going to do? We're going to go over to the bench because we've got something that we need to do to it. Um. 